a music MC my supremacy records 09 yeah yeah girl in the hood i'm about to build it up the girls in the hood yeah i'm about to build it up the girl in the hood uh-huh. i'm about to build it up yeah yeah we about to build it up, our music. Uh-huh. Come on, we about to build it up on the sea. That's right. Yeah, we about to build it up, white supremacy. Welcome to this segment of Pleasant Perspectives. I'm your host, as you know, Michael W. Pleasant, and we are in Flower Town, Pennsylvania, at the Underground Gym. Why are we here? Because we are here to profile Uncle Charles. He is a world-class power lifter. And take a look at these medals here and hanging here and some of these medals on the neck of Uncle Charles and you'll see that this guy is really, really doing some powerful things. He has an interesting story that we'll take a look next on Pleasant Perspectives. Uncle Charles, how are you? I feel good today. You're feeling pretty good? I feel good today. You've been uh, working out a little bit? Uh, yes, you got me <laughs> while I was in the training session. Yeah, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us on the program. Tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, obviously, uh, you are blind and you are a power lifter. I knew I was going to I became scared. You know, people would say, well, you know, because everything I knew in my life and I did it, I did it because of my vision. I was a carpenter, uh, I like to do a business and had like several different businesses. And I became scared and said, you know what, I'm going to try and do what everybody else in the hood was doing and just have fun. So I started out drinking and uh, doing drugs and chasing women. Even though, you know, I, I had some children, I just turned around. I, I'm not going to be able to see or do the things I used to be able to do because I wanted to get it all in. But I realized I was killing myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I went all the way down to become homeless. And the only peace I could find from my fears was getting high every day and living on the streets because I didn't want anybody to do anything for me because I didn't think I was worth anything blind. I, I couldn't even begin to understand how I could live blind. Mm -hmm. Me, I was searching for death, but God decided, no, you can't die because I was in quite precarious situations, okay. you know, okay. in different drug areas and bars that a blind man shouldn't be, an excited man shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, um, so I can just have to say, God helped me there. And I was going to ask you, what was the turning point? Because you were going through these different issues, dealing with the homelessness, chasing the women, the drug and alcohol dependence, but I guess something happened and your life began to change. If you could take us through that a little bit. Yes. Um, I believe it was in 1995, they had a terrible snowstorm. And I was caught out in a snowstorm and frostbitten and down at 37th and Spruce Street in the University of Pennsylvania. And the police came by, the University of Pennsylvania police came by, and the guy who had been talking to me knew I said, listen, I'm taking you to the VA today, you know, if you're really a veteran. I says, I am. So frostbitten <laughs> and blind, half blind, but I still had a little vision in my right eye then. You know, but it was I was hurting myself with it. They took me to the VA emergency ward and that's what turned all this around. And they introduced me to a risk coordinator named, named G.W. Stillwell. Okay. You know, she says, well, listen, we can help you if you come with us. Every way you need help, if you'll submit to it. And to tell the truth, I was actually looking for a reason just to get out of the streets and try to do better. Sure, sure. And that became a real <sighs> structure lifestyle that reminded me of basic training in the military because you had to be disciplined. Okay. You know, if you and you, and you had a dream. And my dream was just, okay, I can live I can learn to live like this, which is what all the VA promised me to learn to teach you how to live with no vision. Okay, okay. And it went from there to the to the VA um, detox to the VA alcohol and drug rehab in Coastville and mental health in Coatesville. Sure. Then from there to the VA Blind Rehabilitation Center in West Haven, Connecticut, where I spent seven months. Okay, seven okay. Months. So it's been a journey, it's it been, seems as though over years, yeah. a constant journey that's gotten you to this point where you are today. Yeah. Let's talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, let's talk about where you are today. Uh, power lifting, dead lifting, bench pressing. Give us some of the stats. How much do you bench press? How much can you power lift? Well, um, 
The bench press at my last meet, I did 281 pounds. Uh, in the squat, I squatted 260. And in the deadlift, I did lift to 402 pounds. Wow. Now, let me help you understand this. Yes, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> because I have no vision, balance and overcoming once again that thing called fear mm -hmm. right, has been a major obstacle in here because just since I'm a power lifter, I still have to do things the way it's done in the side of the world. Okay. Okay, my bench press, I have two inches to come down. <laughs> the space of two inches to come down, or else I'm just fine. When I squat, I have to still have the form and technique of somebody who has said I can't balance, lean from one side to the other. And when I did lift, I got to come out right. Sure. And this became a problem because with no vision, how do you balance yourself? Right. Wait on your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thanks to my coach, Joe Brock, who's a world-class power to doing so world-class, his world championships, he has national championships, he has state championships. I'm the first blind person who ever, he ever trained okay. because he's a trainer of power and a strength builder. Sure. And it's been a long road, yeah. a patient road, because we had to understand where my body movement and muscle changes okay. were at each three or four inches of my lift. So much things goes out to Joe Bracco. <laughs> yes, much thanks to Joe. Okay, Charles started here when he started squatting. Uh, he started using a broom handle. First his body weight, then a broom handle. Uh, and as we continued on adding weight with the smaller bars up to the heavier bars, and then adding weight, uh, it took us, uh, I guess, about two years, and now we're doing 260 pounds. Uh, full range of motion squat, breaking the top of the hip below the top of the knee. Uh, which a lot of people don't like to do. And Charles can manage it, and it took him some time, but he's doing a great job at it now. And even though the same rules are applied for me that does a side of it, I still have to have the same form and technique because mm -hmm. they don't give you no break just because you can't sit there. So you're figuring out all that balance. And with the squat, where I'm at and what muscles I feel at every step is what makes the difference. If I'm out of line one way or the other, with weight in my back, I can hurt myself or fall. Yeah, so it takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience from my coach to and really you know, let me know what I'm doing wrong at each place. And we practice all that on, on the, what do you call it, the boxes? The boxes. Yeah, we wear the boxes where you sit on the boxes each way down so I can feel where my muscle was at, where my body was at, my hips were at, where my body was at. <laughs> it's where the height of the chair, is the boxes approximately 18 inches high, and we take increments of an inch and a half off the boxes, down to 12 inches. Yeah, another place where you are, and uh, what's also very encouraging is I, you know, we've been corresponding a little bit, and there's tons of inspiring quotes that you send in your emails, and I guess tons of quotes that you live by. So give us maybe one or two of your favorite quotes, and why? Why is it your favorite quote? One of the quotes, and I don't remember who it was, I, 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 you asked, you caught me by surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but one of them is, um, your future is based on your daily activities. Hmm. Okay. Um, and what that means is what you do daily is what you can expect your future to be like. Okay. So if I'm productive daily, by coming to the gym and you know, putting up the hard work to train and overcoming fears. So in the future, I should be recognized. You know, it's, it's, it's not should be, but it's expected for me to be recognized as a power lifter. Why? Because I put my time in that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm positive, only because I pray to God every day. Okay. Okay. And that really, really helps me. Um, another one is. If love cannot be equal, let me be the most loving one. Mm. Mm. And people think that means to somebody else. But for a long time, I was self-destructive. Okay. So my love for myself wasn't equal. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And through my prayers, I became aware that there's a higher power than me that had plans for me if I were to just love myself. Okay. You know, so me coming off the streets and, you know, I did go to school. I've been married since I've come off the streets. 
I have a wife and four children. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have five, and my 14 year old daughter died in the year 2000. So I had to endure that during my blindness and not fall apart. Okay, okay. okay. Um, I have two bachelor degrees, I'm not, I mean, associate's degrees okay. from community college. And when did you get those? That was prior to the blindness mm, no, or after, after, the, after the blindness? After the blindness. After the blindness. Wow. After the blindness. Wow. Okay, okay. okay. Um, like I said, I went <coughs> blind in 90, and totally blind in 95. Okay. Okay. Uh, after two years with, with the VA in this system of the blind rehab, then going to the VA in Bath, New York, where they had a professor, professor from Cornell University come and teach me Braille. And then I had to go back to the VA to, to learn to, how to use a computer, a total speech system. Mm. You know, so I had years of education, mm. re-educating myself. Sure, sure. Okay, oh. From living a life of a sad parochial. Now these are the tools I have to use to help me accomplish some degree of normalcy. Mm -hmm. and, in a world that's very fast paced. So there I was now with this this computer, learning how to read Braille and yeah. write Braille, yeah. right? Uh, learning the um, activities of daily living and having the tools and instruments and what you say the technology uh -huh. yeah, because I have a I have a talking watch, I have a money machine from the VA, I have okay. a right. script talking. But my medicine is, I run it across and talk about the bottle wage, uh, talking pressure, you know, and all that. Sure, because um, you're also a diabetic as well. Yes, um, um, but the thing about diabetes is, I didn't become a diabetes until actually my bout, but prostate cancer. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So yeah. you beat prostate cancer too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? This guy. <laughs> okay. Yes, I beat prostate cancer in 2005. Uh, as a result of prostate cancer, and uh, which they finally had to do the surgery, um, the shock to my body was uh, I developed diabetes. Okay. Okay. Now I was predisposed to diabetes. I didn't know it. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm the I'm six sisters, one brother, and I'm the only member of my family who has diabetes. Right. Okay. And I have a brother and prostate cancer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And blindness, yeah. even though it runs in the family. It's amazing. It seems as though any obstacle that is set before you, you overcome. It just seems as though you overcome every obstacle somehow or another. Thanks to God. Okay. Okay, sure. see, like I say, when I didn't love myself, uh -huh. you know, God couldn't love me. And this isn't a spiritual approach, just what I believe for my life. Okay. okay. I have the Bible on my computer and I make sure every day I read something like that. Okay. All right. you know, I teach my children. Scriptural ways. I write letters to my mm -hmm. my children uh -huh. and especially my sons about. Okay, this is what you're going through as a teenager. Go. I'm gonna give you a prayer first. I'm gonna bless you first. Okay. And then okay. I'm gonna talk over how you can help yourself with all the issues you're going through as a teenager. Go from a male perspective. Yeah. And yeah. this is one of the things that I'm so happy about. Since one of my fears on the line is how would I raise my son? Okay. Okay. Because no matter what. A father is the most important thing in a family. Mm -hmm. You know, the mother does well. The man couldn't, the husband couldn't make her a wife. There's something about the father that both the sons and the daughters will look up to. Wow. And in saying that, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Um, my son went to Scotland School for Veterans Children. Okay. Uh, it's in Scotland, Pennsylvania, a place for veterans who have children that maybe they're, they're single parents or they're just able can go to for free. Yeah. My son went there from 98 to, um, he graduated in 2006. Okay. He went from, I think, eighth grade or seventh grade to graduation. In 2002, he was about 15. And we always went up to see him. So my son came home that Easter because my wife and I always went for Parents' Day and we had to have basketball games so we could make it up and everything just to support him. Both of us, not just one of us. So he came home in the Easter break of 2002 and he sat me down and says, Dad, I just want to thank you and mom for being mother and father and husband and wife. 
So quiet. I said, okay. Well, thanks. I said, not that. I really mean it. So next thing in my mind, okay, he wants something. <laughs> so I sat down and I said, don't dare listen to me. I said, yes. Yeah. She says, um, seriously, you know, I'm glad because so many of my friends, after y'all did, tell me they wish they had a mother and a father that came up or just a mother that came up okay. because a lot of them were there and then that the parents forgot about them because they were actually being taken care of. Mm. And I went to and cried after that. Okay, okay. Because it let me know that God had answered an issue and a fear that I had a long time. Sure. I can't bathe my son. I think they want something physical. Yeah. So it's behind that that really motivates me to try to be the best that I can be within my limitations. Sure, sure. Because it means a lot to my children. Understood. Yeah, we talked about your past. We talked about your uh, present. Now let's talk about your future. Where are you headed next? Obviously, these uh, these powerlifting mm -hmm. events and competitions that you go to, they're not cheap. So let's talk about the funding you get. How can you receive funding? Any other type of events you have coming up in the future? Well, I just qualified for the World Games in December. And the World Games this year will be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They were supposed to be in Cairo, Egypt. But they moved him because of the political mm. okay. aspects over there. Yeah. Now, this shirt I have on CAF is a Challenge Athletes Foundation. Okay. I'm a part of their Operation Rebound program, which is for disabled veterans. Okay. So, right now, they do most of the sponsoring of my funding. Okay. Um, to pay for the gym fee and training the gym, but he does it virtually for nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, you know, and, then, and I said, well, yes, you can. I realize you're doing it for nothing, but, you know, this this is still a private gym and it has its expenses. So, um, Nico is the, my contact and he's in California. And uh, he came here to Philadelphia. And he, you know, said, okay, listen, you're one of the few that we have that are blind that you know, it's at your age, because I'm 61 years old. I was 61, 59 when I first started this to make competitions. Mm. So funding is travel, um, lodging, food, and escort. Because I'm blind, mm -hmm. I need escort. Sure, sure. Okay. And if folks wanted to donate uh, to you to help your cause, how, where, when can they do that? Well. My church is has my um, nonprofit. They made me a nonprofit organization or part of the Christ of Calvary Community Development Corporation at 500 South 61st Street, Philadelphia, PA 19143. And what you do is you actually check to the Charles King Olympic Fund okay. and care of them. And somewhere where Memo was at, put down. C C C D C, which stands for Christ Okawi Community Development Corporation. That way you can get a non profit, you can get a tax deduction. Oh sure, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. For anybody that wants to you know help me. And uh, besides that food supplements. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. 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 Uh, my future is one thing for sure is for the USA team, I've talked to my coach, the USA coach, which is Coach Sam of Yasaba who was the coach of the USA Bond team. And he's let me know that at age 62, which I will be when the next games come, he's invited me there because of my accomplishments so far being in the all three lists. Okay. Uh, I consider a real record there is to be the only 62 year old um, to ever perform well in all three lists okay. Okay. at the World Games. So there'll be about 20 other countries there. Sure, sure. You know, and it looks like from what he's saying, is I'll be the only person over 60. Okay. Because most other countries, it's the USA. Uh huh. So they sponsor their athletes. Okay. In America, we have to get sponsorship from, sure. from our people. So I'm having fun. Yeah. Okay. And God bless my health. This will be a great, a great thing for. Veterans, blind people, past my family. It's a great story to tell. Yeah. And of course, you'll come home with another one of these. Uh, <laughs> medals. Of course, you'll come home with another medal. Yeah, these are surprises because I don't go to win the gold. Okay. Right? I go just to have fun. Sure, sure. Right? And because all of a sudden, individually, I can compete with okay. without sight. 
or you know, um, um, just isn't the game for just a sight. It's just it's, it's how much you put into something. Like that. Sure. <sighs> all good things. Good. Yeah, it makes you feel good. All good things coming from Uncle Charles. Man, what a powerful, powerful story. And you should have been uplifted, inspired, ready to go up there and do whatever your goals are because you've seen Uncle Charles and nothing has held this man back from accomplishing what he set out to accomplish. Thanks for joining us for this segment of Present Perspectives. And we'll see you Rocket. Got it here. Good here. Good job. 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 Good yeah, girl in the hood, I'm about to build it up. We're building the hood, yeah. I'm about to build it up. We're building the hood, uh-huh. I'm about to build it up. Yeah, yeah. We about to build it up. Our music, uh-huh. come on, we about to build it up. Let me see. That's right. Yeah, we about to build it up. My supremacy.